Forty, how are you? Good, how are you? Welcome back. I, uh, it's so good to hear the chatter, and it's so good to hear all of you back. And uh, did we get everybody in? You guys seem so distant sitting there. Nobody sitting there. And you know what? For the last couple of years, thank you guys. These guys have been sitting right here for the last couple of years, and you guys right there. So I appreciate it. The only four people that come up front. <laughs> But I want to welcome you back, and I just want to thank you. I want to start out as normal with our pledge, and then I'm going to ask for a moment of silence. Um, a lot of people have commented on my tie. They say, nice tie, nice tie. And uh, as you know, I'm a Steelers fan. I'm not a Steelers fan. I'm a Jets fan, right? But the interesting thing about the Steelers tie is I just wanted to share with you, and this is what I want to be the focus of uh, our moment of silence. Don Sacco, we lost a dear member of our family and a board member, a retired teacher this summer, Don Sacco. And if you know anything about Don and you, all you that have talked with him, Don wore a tie every day. Every day to work, that was part of his, his, his thing. He wore a tie. And his family gave me a tie, one of his ties. And um, this steel tie belongs to Don Sacco. And I looked at it this way. Board members are still getting at me, even though he's sending me a steal of time, although I'm a chance fan. So, when we have our moment of silence, if you would keep Mr. Sacco and his family in, in your thoughts and prayers. Um, also, we have a number of people who have lost their parents, grandparents, who have had ill people. We have um, people among our family who have received diagnoses and things of that nature. So, Please pray for us as well. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. teachers. Uh, we have a couple of new teachers that will be joining us, so I know that the new teachers probably don't want to stand and do this, but we just want to just quickly acknowledge you. Uh, Alexis, if Alexis would stand up. Alexis is going to be teaching French Middle School. Let's give her a hand. <laughs> Stephanie, Stephanie, are you here? There's Stephanie back there, and Stephanie's joining us for music at First District. Welcome, Stephanie. <laughs> Bailey, are you here? Haley, France? Oh, there you are, Haley. I didn't see you. Let's say hi to Haley. She's going to be joining us in the, in the, uh, the guidance at Mans. Zachary, did you, Zachary make it? Zachary's new. Zachary, welcome. He's going to be doing uh, things at the second district. Matthew Gross, Matthew, are you here? English at MAMS. We have a couple of long term stuff that came in on the last minute for us. Lauren, are you here? Long term. Did you make it? Lauren, thanks. Thanks for joining us. Scott, Scott, last minute, LTS. There he is back there, but he's going to at West Bay. And Monica is going to, is Monica, did Monica make it? I know she's doing some of the gifted long-term stuff. I don't, don't know if she's here. Here she is, thanks. So I want to thank you for uh, joining our family. Don, you also had a, a new building manager, and his name was Mark McGuire. Is Mark in the building? Did, is he? No? Okay. I just want to acknowledge Mark. He's joining us uh, here uh, and joining our family and taking over as a uh, building. Uh, uh, manager down in Cockington. I also want to take uh, a second to do something here, which is kind of tough. I've been thinking about this all weekend. It, it's uh, it's tough, but it's it, it we're we're glad that this is happening. I want to take a moment to honor. You may have all known that uh, Mr. Ford will be leaving us, and he has uh, accepted the superintendency. Uh, at another district, and we want to say to Mr. Ford, first and foremost, 
We thank you for all that you have done for this district, and we know that you are going to do well, and that the other district is receiving a blessing in you, and that we pray that you know that you're going to do the great things there as well. And so we're going to miss you, but we honor you and bless you on your journey. So please give us support. Thank the presidents, uh, the CEA, Doug, and I don't know if Jan Philippa made it, but they actually uh, gave up their time this year to do their speech because we have a keynote speaker that I will introduce uh, uh, in a moment here. I do want to say a couple of words before we go on. A couple more thanks I want to give real quickly is our custodial and maintenance department and Dave Dixon and those folks. I want to thank you for your hard work. They, they've done a fantastic job um, working all summer. They have this thing down to a science. You, you go through and they just fly through this thing and it's amazing. So can you please give all of our custodians, our native people, our family, and what they've done this summer? I, I really, I truly, I truly thank them. I want to thank my staff for putting up with me and all the, the ladies and everybody and that have to listen to me as we get ready for the summer. So I thank Lisa and uh, Janet and Phyllis and Guy and Mike and my CMT team and my administrators who have to listen and put up with me all summer as we get ready. So I thank you. But a number of people uh, did a lot of work this summer and I just want to acknowledge it. Um, so if you were in any of these groups Please don't be shy. I just want you to stand up for a moment. And as I call these groups, just stand up. If you were involved in the Math Curriculum Writing Committee, please stand. The Math Curriculum Writing I know there were a lot of you, so please keep standing for a second. If you were involved in the ELA Curriculum Writing Committee or rewriting this summer as well, can you please stand? The ELA Curriculum Writing. There was more than one person. <laughs> I know that because I have the number right here. There was at least 15 of you. Please stand. The STEM committee from Hockton uh, Ju uh, Junior Senior High School did, did the math curriculum writing. If you were involved in that, please stand. Please stand. More than one person did that as well. If you were par part of the Canvas training at all this summer, please stand up. Canvas training. If you were involved in MASH one to one committee, please stand up. And last but not least, if you were involved in the Crawford Central Visioning Day, please stand up. Crawford Central Visioning Day, please stand up. I want to thank all of you for all of your hard work and everything you did this summer. Please give them a hand. I left you with this statement on our opening letter that every child deserves a champion, an adult who will never give up on them, who understands the power of connection and insists that they become the best. I want to start out by reading something to you. Dear Flo, I want to write you this letter to say thank you. You may or may not know how, how uh, Excuse me, you may or may not know this, but you make my day 99% better when, you, when I talk to you. On my worst days, you find a way to make me smile. Whether it's showing me and Mackenzie pictures of your dog, or showing us pictures of you and your cat. There are endless ways for you to uh, bring joy into my life. I love how you go out of your way to make sure you say hi to every single person who goes through the breakfast line in the morning. You always take the time to make sure there is a smile, smile on everyone's face and that makes me feel as though you care about all of us. And I know you do. There is no rule to say, there is no, there is no rule saying that you have to know every person's name or to say hello to everyone or even joke around with us. But that is the person you are, and it shows us all that you love working here and that you really make us feel good. There is never a day where you don't say good morning to me and call me gorgeous, and call me gorgeous. 
and I'm sure you're not the only one who, who will say say this, but th I'm sure I'm not the only one who will say this, but thank you for being such an amazing person inside and out, inside and out. It's because of you that I enjoy coming to school. Because I know I will see your happy face. Then she goes on to wish the employee a Merry Christmas. Is Flo in the audience just by chance? Is she? I don't know. Her husband is in the back. Okay. She works down with fat and hungry about. <laughs> she works down at Cochranton in the cafeteria. And the point I want to start to drive home in my message today is that every child deserves a champion. Flo is a champion in the lives of many children just by the moment to moment interaction she has with them. Could you just go to the next one? That's Flo's letter. I just wanted you to read it because I know you all couldn't read it with your, even with your glasses on. <laughs> Can you get the next one, please? I had this interesting experience. So I, uh, I was celebrating my 30th anniversary, and my wife decided that I needed to go on a vacation with her, right? So she took me to Aruba, and she said I was going. And I went to this place called La Cabana. It was a very small resort in Aruba. I had actually never heard of it. It wasn't one of the big boys. It wasn't the Hyatt. It wasn't the, the Hilton. It wasn't one of those places. But from the moment I walked in the door, I realized there was something special about the place. So about Wednesday of that day, of that week, I made an appointment with the HR department. And my wife says to me, only you can go on vacation and make an appointment with the HR department. But I wanted to find out something about the culture of their organization and how they had developed it. And here you have the director of the um, HR department, assistant director, and one of the uh, 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 young ladies that work in the department. And as I met with them, I said, I want to talk to you about your culture. And it, the culture started with, can you hit the next one, I think? The culture started with this button. But on the button, I don't know if you can see it, it says, I believe if it matters to you, it matters to me. So I said to her, what, did, what does that mean? Why do you, what, what, are you, what are you talking about in that? And she said to us, that is the organizational culture. And it doesn't mean we feel this way just about people who are coming to stay at our resort. That is our belief in everything we do. So if anyone says something to someone, they believe because it's important to you, it becomes important to the organization. And that culture was permeated throughout the whole resort, from the people who opened the door, to the people who were uh, cleaning the mirrors in the, in the elevator, to the people who were, you know, everywhere, on the beach, that culture. If it was important to you, I asked a simple question about the currency transaction. What does an American dollar mean in their money? And I got a, an entire lesson plus coins to go with it. Because they felt it was important for me to understand the transaction and what happens with American money versus their money. And I, I, and I just kept following through, through the security guard, to the people, the lifeguards at the pool, to the people at the, the bar, to the people at, in the restaurants. Everything they believed is that if it was important to you, it was important to us. That's what was happening between Flo and that student. So, everything that your customer believes is important is what they focused on in that culture. And I have a small clip because I'm not the keynote speaker. We have a keynote speaker who was going to come up and, and deliver a speech for us, but I want to show you something that that thanks to Miles and Terry down in Cochrane, they helped me put together about what our students, our customers, really believe. So I'm going to try to show this. And hopefully, it's going to play, and it's going to play, and uh, we're not going to have any problems. Right, Becky?
Take a look at this. This is a little bit long, but when you see, I couldn't cut anything out. The physics teacher here, Mr. Weber, has had a pretty big impact on my life so far. I've had him the last three years in class, and uh, he's really shown me the kind of well-rounded education I could get from learning about physics and uh, becoming a better problem solver and stuff like that. So. Elementary school and in first grade, Mrs. Sarah was my teacher, and I had lost a family member I was close to during that school year, and she knew I was very upset by it, so she let me and my cousin in my class push our desks together in the back of the room and we like did not pay attention to class for a couple weeks which was very nice of her to do because she knew that I was upset and just wanted to talk to my cousin. A teacher that's had a positive impact on my life would be Mrs. Big because before this year I've never really understood math and I've always like really struggled even if I got extra help and I've definitely never had an A in math until this year but um, she's helped me a lot and I understand it now and I think I'll have like an easier time in college with that. A teacher that has had a very positive outlook on my life has been Mrs. Vignolini. She's always been there for me and she was always very supportive and she always made, sh made sure I understood the curriculum that she was teaching and she always went above and beyond and she was always very supportive and anything I needed she was there to help me. I love Miss Porter because <laughs> she really is like my school mom. She like talks me through things and like helps me with like life decisions and it just makes my like school experience so much easier because I can go to her room whenever I just need to be like look I'm stressed and she'll like talk with me and it's just like really nice to be able to like have that because if I didn't I don't know what I'd do you know. Had a positive impact on me is Mr. O'Shea and that's because he's the kind of teacher that can make any bad days better and his classroom is just a super laid back classroom and it's always fun to be there. Um, you can also depend on him to give you honest and truthful advice. I think the one teacher that I would really appreciate um, is Mr. Armand Walter. He's always been there for me and he always just cares. teacher was my sixth grade teacher, Miss Christie, and she was my favorite teacher because she made it feel more like a family than a classroom, so I was always really excited to come to school because of all like the fun antics we got up to. And it was Mr. Roberts, my seventh grade English teacher, because if I'm having a bad day, he lets me do the work, but not a lot, so he gets my feelings if I'm having a bad day or not. Mr. Andre from Mans and Miss Rajnavar from Second District. Um, I chose them because one, they push you just the right amount to be successful and they are very caring and really helpful and they've just made me a really just a better person. Uh, Mr. Hyatt, my seventh grade social studies teacher, because he let us, um, he was pretty unique, he let us choose, choose our own path for what we wanted to do in his class. Um, he um, empowered us, um, he pushed us forward. Uh, Mr. Walter, the music teacher, um, he always makes us feel like we're one and he always uh, is very enthusiastic about what he does and makes every day great even if it's not started out the best he will make sure it ends the best. My favorite teacher is Mrs. Brown and she's a t seventh grade teacher. She would be my favorite teacher because she's taught me how to be comfortable with myself and love me for who I am and she always helps me get over all the problems I need. Miss Leonard because she, she was nice to me and she was there for whenever I was like mad or something. Miss Brown, because she she okay, helps so me when I'm in trouble. Miss Marshall, yeah, she um, I'll call her mom, and she's and like she a mom, or she like a mom, and she buys me, goes me. Miss Porter, because from what I remember, she was really funny. If I had to choose my favorite teacher, I would say Miss Foster because in second grade she helped me through a lot and she was really nice to me. Mrs. Barnes because she's funny and nice and she let us use the Ozo bots for, for we were the first one to use them. 
I would probably have to say Miss Britton because I wasn't here that long and she's helped me through a lot and she's really funny and nice and sweet to me. Miss Prather because I when I got here in third grade, she just like was really nice and like I didn't really have any friends when I first got here and I kind of looked like a boy, so yeah. I would have to say my favorite teacher would be Mr. Weathers because whatever we did, we made it he like made it fun. My favorite teacher is probably Miss Palmer because she's been nice to me and she's helped me through a lot over my seven years that I've been here. Favorite teacher would probably have to be Mr. Kerner because he makes learning a lot of fun. My favorite teacher would probably be Mrs. Hunter because she told because she tells jokes and just makes learning fun. She makes games and stuff and fun projects that we have to do. Mr. Bazlett because he's funny and he always reads books. Mrs. Hunter because um, she helped me with a lot of stuff and she's funny. My favorite teacher is Miss Smith because she is really fun and she also thinks of really fun things to do in art class. Teacher's Mrs. Lang because she helped me with my work and she was really nice. Mrs. Zimmerman because she helped me do cursive and because I didn't know how to do cursive be th before third grade and she helped me hold my pencil right and because of that, my handwriting's a lot better. Mrs. Lang, because when I was in kindergarten, she let us do less work a little bit, and then we would just do it the next day. And also, she let us have recess in the morning. And Mrs. DuPont, because they just like, have so much energy and very positive people home because he supports everyone in his classroom and he's taught me a lot of life, life lessons. Mr. DuPont because he's a nice and friendly person. Uh, my favorite teacher is Ms. Smook because she's the one that really helped me through fourth grade and she's the one that was really kind to me when I had no friends. Mrs. Pearson because she's nice, her class is reading and I like reading. I have other favorite teachers too. Uh, there's Mr. Tome, uh, there's Miss Hol Mrs. Holtz, and other te and the other teachers. And it's going to be the end of the school tomorrow. And I'm w wishing that that they I have a great summer, and so do they. Mr. Tome was my favorite teacher, and he was my favorite teacher because I've always liked all my math teachers, and he was the best math teacher I've ever had, and he was very nice to me, and our whole class actually really loved him. My favorite teacher would have to be Ms. Karras. Um, my fourth grade teacher. Um, she was really nice and fun. I had her for her last last year of teaching, so she retired this year. Um, she was, like, as I said, nice. We got, played a bunch of like games, and um, she came up with a lot of good math stuff, like this concession stand where we'd tell, like, We'd have to do money. We'd go up to people and ask them if they want anything, and we'd give them. They'd order stuff, and they only had a certain amount of money, and we'd had to figure everything out, and everything it was really fun. I have two favorite teachers. I just can't decide between them because they're the best teachers ever. My one of my favorites is Mrs. Minnis, and my first grade teacher. She's just helped me through everything, and I just. She's my favorite teacher because she's helped me. My other favorite teacher is Mrs. Cares. Like, she, I had her the last year, my fourth grade teacher. And we had, at the end of the year, we had a garage sale where she 
we had a certain amount of money, like fake money, and she uh, sold all of her things, like most of them. And it was just really fun, and they're the best teachers I've ever had. My favorite teacher is Mrs. Um, Schaaf because she does lots of fun things like math games and reading games, and they're lots of fun and she's really nice. Miss Pitna because she loves us watch movies and play games. Oh, Mrs. Bo and um, we watch movies and we play f for um um uh, I think for an hour and then it, we have fire drills and then we go back inside. Mr. Early because he makes class more fun and want us to learn. Yeah. Uh, my favorite teacher is Mr. Yost because uh, I've probably learned the most and gained the most experiences from him. My teacher is Miss Nelson because she's helped me through a lot of rough times in my life and plus she helped me a lot through math. Yeah. Okay, well, my favorite teacher is Mr. Canfield because on top of being good at teaching and making a lot of ways to actually help you learn things, he also jokes around and makes teaching fun and, or learning fun, I should say. And his class is not the hardest. He makes it easy for you. Uh, my favorite teacher is Mrs. Anderko because she's like she's a really cool, nice teacher, and like in writers' workshop. It's like a very lax class. We get stuff done, but like we can have like a nice like it's almost gossipy <laughs> conversation <laughs> with her. But it's like a very fun class. It's very relaxed, you know. And it's like that with like her other classes too. Like in English, it's very relaxed and nice and fun. Yeah. Mr. Chernkuski is my favorite teacher because he keeps us on task. On Derrico because she's nice. I like Miss Tarkin because she's my homeroom teacher and she likes chicken. <laughs> My favorite teacher is Miss Duck because she's nice. My favorite teacher is Miss Karkin because she always makes sure to ask me how hockey's going. My favorite teacher is Mr. Canfield because he's the basketball coach and I like basketball. My favorite teacher is Miss Karkin because she is, is the best. My favorite teacher is Mrs. Carr because she was always super fun and had fun activities and she would sometimes trick us but she would still have us learn in just a fun way. My favorite teacher would be Miss Shear because she was always so fun and so kind and if you like if we were having trouble on something she would always come up to us and ask if we needed any help and then she'd describe like what we needed to do and she would just make it fun and not make us like sit through a lesson and just sit there and not do anything. She'd let us, um, like we'd have activities every day for something. My favorite yeah. teacher is Mrs. Writers because she makes learning fun yeah. and she always, she can relate to the students and she makes us feel good about ourselves. My favorite teacher is Miss Carr because she was funny and really nice. Miss Clayton because um, she always did stuff nice and she had punches. My name is Miss Helper because she gives us candy for good. We know this thing. My favorite teacher is Mrs. Thompson. And she's my favorite teacher because she is nice. My favorite teacher is Mrs. Nehea because she is nice. My teacher is Mr. Haynes because he likes math and I like math. My favorite teacher is Ms. Frater because she's fun and she does, she's a good science teacher. Alright. My favorite teacher is Mrs. Zurich because she does fun class. My favorite teacher is Ms. Hyde because she teaches us. My teacher is Ms. Nibble because she teaches us math and I like math and she's really nice. My favorite teacher is Ms. Hyde because she is nice and lets us have the students. We better check into that West End place that Mrs. Lane, right? Because they do a whole lot of recess and. <laughs> And these, these nibbles, don't, you're not far behind. <laughs> I better get up to that Pittner room, they're watching movies. <laughs> What's the show in Pittner? <laughs>
But the point is this. <laughs> I will be by there. <laughs> See what she's showing. <laughs> I might bring some popcorn and join them. <laughs> the point is this. What's important to the customer? And this could have gone on for hours. We have to cut it short, right? Because this could have just gone on and on and on because once we started talking to them and once they started opening up, this could have been a three hour show because they just wanted to share. And most of the sharing, as you can see, was about what was important to them. So I'm going to pray that you have a great open this year. I want to thank you. Uh, for all of your hard work. I want to thank you in advance because, you know, you guys are so loving in August, and then in June you're calling me all sorts of names as you leave here. <laughs> you're not nice to me, you know, so. So, but I want to I want to uh, thank you in advance for, for everything that you do. And uh, understand that you count. You make a difference. You make an impact on the lives of kids. Even when I do this with the new teachers, when I say to them, Tell me about a teacher you remember that made an impact on your life. They hardly ever tell me about the content. And usually if they do, it's always my English teacher, but she really, you know, she was kind to me. She was like my second mother. It's really not about that. It's about what's important to them.